Congratulations, Wreck-It Ralph. Such a fun movie. I loved it. Thank you very much. So you play Fix-It Felix Jr. And how would you describe this character? Felix is uh, the ultimate good guy. And he's quite a people pleaser. And uh, he loves doing his job, which is fixing everything that Ralph wrecks. So Felix gets into a little bit of trouble when Ralph decides to take his own journey to become a hero himself. And Felix soon realizes that he has nothing to fix if Ralph is not there to wreck it. And so he learns a little about himself. Yeah. And he's you know, your typical nice guy. Sure. Everybody loves him. And then he meets Sergeant Calhoun. And things kind of change a little bit. That is correct. Uh, Felix and Ralph are from this 8-bit world, very simple kind of video game existence. And when Felix goes off to find Ralph, he encounters all these other characters from all these other games, uh, one of them being Jane Lynch's character, Sergeant Calhoun, from Heroes Duty, which is this first person kind of shoot him up. And so not only is he out of his element in this environment, but when he meets a person like Sergeant Calhoun, he, uh, he, he, uh, he gets a little loopy there. <laughs> okay. And any advice for all those nice guys out there that maybe just can't catch a break? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Nice guys, it's okay to be nice. It all comes out in the end. <laughs> Definitely good advice. So what was it about this character or the script of this movie that really want, like that made you want to be a part of it? Well, first of all, it's a Disney movie. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of Disney, but they got, they got a good track record. Uh, also, the script was fantastic from the very beginning. Now, it did evolve over, you know, two and a half years it takes to do something like this. Um, but it, uh, it, it, the characters were so fleshed out. And also, this was kind of a, a world that we had never seen before of uh, video games. And there's some retro stuff with the brand new stuff. And it really was intriguing on, on a bunch of levels. And as you mentioned, there is a good mix of characters happening in this film. Yes. If you could be any other video game character besides your own, who would you want to be? From the movie or just in the real? Let's say from the movie. Okay. Uh, let's see. You know, i got to say I do have an affinity for Qbert. He was pretty cute. Right? And yeah. he's old school and he just had one kind of job. Jump on those little things and don't get bit by a snake. That was a good pick. <laughs> <laughs> so were you, an, were you an arcade kid growing up? Well, we did have video games at home. We did get to go to the arcade game on rep uh, the arcade on a report card day, and uh, we would go to the Super Scooper, and you'd get um, like three tokens for every A and two tokens for every B, and that's where I really got to see how video games were evolving, and um, that was kind of cool. Like never, you know, at home I wouldn't have had Dragon's Lair, like the first laser disc video game or whatever, and just also. To hear the noises that you hear in our game, like, uh, what is it? Body blow, body blow, the box. <laughs> uh, it was fun, but that was always, it was a special treat to go to the arcade. So I hold that memory dear. Okay, great. And did you get to work with any of the other cast in doing the voiceovers, or was it kind of just you on your own? For the most part, it's me and a microphone. Um, and, you know, you'd have several sessions like that. But every now and then, I got to do a session with John C. Riley, And then I got to do a session with Jane Lynch. And those are my favorite. Because you're just, essentially, you're just goofing off with friends at that point. Um, these are people I've known forever. Actually, me and John and Jane were all in Talladega Nights a million years ago. And so uh, just being able to play with these guys was fun. Was it hard to kind of stay on track when you're with such comedians? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, very hard to stay focused. But um, once we did it as it was on the script, then the directors were just like, all right, have fun with it. And we just went nuts. And it was awesome. It was awesome. Okay, so 30 Rock is wrapping up. Yes. How are you feeling about that? It's hard. I think it's going to be bittersweet. Right now, it's just business as you as usual. We got to get the episodes done, but um, I think towards the end, it's going to get emotional. Seven imagine. years I've been doing that. Seven and years. And I know I probably wouldn't have been asked to do Wreck It Ralph if it weren't for Thirty Rock. So I, I'm, I know how my bread's buttered. <laughs> and you've also got another very interesting film coming up, Movie Forty Three. Oh, yes. Can you give us a hint of what we can <laughs> expect from that? <laughs> well, it is, uh, it's not necessarily family fair. Quite different uh, from Wreck-It Ralph, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, super fun to do. It was just one day of shooting and uh, with Richard Gere, Kate Bosworth, and it's uh, quite a departure from Fix of Felix Jr. Oh, uh, yeah. R-rated. It's a good yeah. way to describe it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what else have you got coming up next for you? Well, 
You know what? I have a Disney cartoon coming up, uh, a daytime series coming up, uh, I think, next year. It's called Wander Over Yonder, and it's by Craig McCracken, who he's behind so, such animation like the Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. And so when he asked me to be a part of that project, I was like, yeah. In a hort twice. <laughs> I know, right? Great. Well, thank you so much, Jack. Thank it you. was a pleasure to meet you. A real and pleasure. Congratulations on Wreck It Ralph. Thank you so much.